Hi everyone, Jason from Makeara here with another project tutorial video. And in this one, we're looking at how to create a really fine detail brass owl ring with our Carvera Air desktop CNC and the optional fourth axis module. This is a pretty cool project because it not only creates a beautifully detailed metal ring, but it also takes advantage of the fourth axis module that allows your desktop CNC to rotate your stock as it cuts for geometrically complex carving projects. And what's really cool about this project is that it's actually not that complex to make because using Makeara Cam allows us to generate rotational toolpaths for the fourth axis in just a few clicks. So let's dive in. You can download the files used to create this project from the knowledge sharing page on our wiki site as shown. With the models downloaded, just launch Makeara Cam to start preparing them for manufacturing. So once you launch Makeara Cam, go ahead and create a new fourth axis project, which will throw you into our fourth axis workspace that looks something like this. And as with any CNC project, the first thing we wanna do is adjust our stock. So let's edit our stock and I'm gonna choose brass because that's what I'm working with for this ring. And I'm also using a piece of round stock, though of course you could use a piece of square stock. It would just take a little bit longer because you have more material to machine away to get to your actual finished part. So I have round selected and I'm gonna adjust my diameter to match my stock, which is 36.2 millimeters. That's what I'm working with here. And I'm also gonna adjust my length. Now the actual stock length that I'm working with is about 40 millimeters, but you don't necessarily have to adjust the length of your stock to match the length of your stock if you're not using the entire length. So this ring that I'm creating is only about 17 millimeters in length, even a little bit smaller than that. Um, so I'm gonna leave that at 17 millimeters, even though I am working with a piece of 40 millimeter stock because I'm not using all of that and I can always adjust the position of my model later on in the Carvera controller app, but that's not required. That is just something that might help you visualize your model a little bit better here at the cam stages. So with my stock adjusted, we can then go ahead and import the 3D model that you may have downloaded uh, from our wiki site. All right, and you can see that I have that model imported and it fits quite nicely on my stock, of course, because it's, it's the size that I want it to be. Now you'll also notice that this model has the center cylinder mesh. That's just part of the design that was uh, how it was created here. So that's not hugely uh, important to worry about. But what you'll also see are these squares. These squares are the tabs that are going to hold this part to the stock, which we'll have to cut these square tabs off, these rectangular tabs off after machining in post-production. If you ever import a model that does not have these tabs pre-drawn like this, you can always use the create tools to create a rectangular 3D model or a cube 3D model to draw those tabs in yourself. But the first thing that we wanna talk about is adjusting the size and position to match the ring that you might wanna create based on your stock and, and of course your own ring diameter that you're looking to fit. So I find that one of the easiest things to do here is to actually create a new 3D model in Makeara Cam to match the center bore of your ring, which would essentially be the size of the ring that's gonna fit over your finger. So let's create a 3D model using the create function. And I'm gonna create a cylinder that matches the diameter that I drilled out of my stock to fit my finger, which would be 17.8 millimeters. I'm then gonna set the height of this cylinder to be the length of my stock that I'm working with, just so it spans the whole length, which would be 17 millimeters. And I can just click on my screen to create this cylinder. Let's go ahead and now click on the cylinder and head over to the transform move tools and just click quick align stock. And this should automatically center the cylinder on my stock in all three axes, which it does. You then wanna check your ring size based on this cylinder. So I'm gonna look at it from a side profile and you can see that my ring is also centered around the cylinder, which is good. That means that not the design is centered, but the, the actual hole, the opening of the ring is centered around the hole that I've created in my cylinder. So that's of course really important. You wouldn't want the, the ring to be offset and not aligned to the hole that you've created. But you might also wanna change the size of this ring. So you can click on your ring and head over to scale and you can make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller to make sure that the center of the ring lines up pretty closely with the hole that you've cut out. It doesn't have to be a super tight fit per se. Um, you wanna make sure that you machine up to the hole here, um, which we'll, we'll do by selecting both shapes in our toolpaths later. But you do wanna make sure that the ring does actually fit the hole that you're working with. And you can easily change and link your XYZ here to scale it, again, a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller to make sure that it fits your necessary uh, constraints. 
So with the ring position and with the center uh, hole created as this 3D model, we're ready to go ahead and move on to creating our first toolpaths. So let's select uh, both of our models by holding shift and selecting both the cylinder and the ring. And let's create a rotational relief toolpath. Now, the first thing we wanna do is adjust our heights. So the heights can be start height of zero and depth of zero, and you can have max depth enabled of zero as well. That just means that we're gonna machine directly down to the model as much as we can, at least with the first tool. And the first tool is not gonna be able to get that close in detail. Um, you can create a max depth with a very small uh, offset if you'd like. So for example, 0 0.1 millimeters or so, that will just keep the tool one, 0 0.1 millimeters away from your model. Uh, ensuring that it doesn't overcut or things. But with the tools that I'm selecting in this model, that's probably not necessary. That's more of like a, just kind of playing it safe depending on the fine detail that you're looking to machine. Um, but that's just an option that you can enable if needed. The safe positions are important. The clearance, height, the clearance height and the retract heights. This is typically half of your stock diameter plus three millimeters is a good buffer. Um, so I'm, I'm setting mine to 21.1 to support that. And then we can select our tool. So I'm gonna to delete this tool, which is from another toolpath I created previously. And I'm gonna select a 3.175 by 25 millimeter single flute end mill for metal with brass automatically selected as my default bead and speed. Now it's important for this first tool, this first roughing pass. And if you wanna keep yourself organized, you can label, uh, label this roughing pass up top here. It's important to enable step downs or else your tool is just gonna plunge straight down to your model, which will certainly break your bit with how much we're removing here on brass. So we'll enable step downs and I'm gonna keep the default feeds and speeds. These are pretty good numbers. It might not be the fastest that you can machine this, but these are pretty good numbers to reduce the overall wear and strain on your bits. You also wanna double check your tool number. This is our first tool, so I'm gonna leave this assigned as tool one. We'll keep our machining direction to be horizontal, which is great for a roughing pass. So the Carvera Air will kind of pan side to side like this to machine this in a horizontal cutting direction. We're not going to enable tailstock because we're not gonna be using the tailstock because we're gonna machine right to the end of our part. And we can enable ramping. And uh, let's see, my default ramping distance of 10 and a fixed angle of two and a start height of 0.2 millimeters is a pretty good buffer for you to use for a small model like this. So let's go ahead and click calculate. And that should calculate our first toolpath, which is gonna to be a little messy because there's a lot going on here. But if I orbit around, you can see that we are not only cutting the model around the contours of the model, but we're also cutting up to our tabs in the model. These bars are the tabs that we'll be working with as mentioned earlier. And we're cutting up to the cylinder that we've created, which means that we're going to machine up to this center hole, regardless of whether that ring was perfectly scaled to that center hole earlier which is important for a proper fit. All right, so we can close that. Let's just hide this toolpath so we can see. Let's select both models again, and let's create another rotational relief toolpath. This one is gonna be either your first finishing pass or second roughing pass, depending on how you look at it. So I'm gonna call it roughing pass number two. And we're gonna use the same start depth, end depth, max depth, and clearance is as we did before, but we are gonna select a different bit, a smaller bit that's gonna be get, able to get a little bit closer to our model. And I'm gonna delete this tool and instead select a ball nose bit, specifically a two by six millimeter ball nose bit for metal, and we'll keep brass feeds and speeds. Now, this is not gonna be our finished tool. We're gonna to wanna to go a little bit smaller. And in theory, do I need this ball nose bit? Perhaps not, perhaps you can jump right to your smaller tool. But what we are gonna do here is disable step downs, which means that this tool is gonna to come straight to your model, or at least uh, the, the, what wasn't already cleared out by the previous bit, right? And that's why I don't wanna go right to the smaller tool. I don't wanna, there's still gonna be quite a bit of material left over from our, our first flat end mill. So I wanna keep this a larger ball nose bit before I go to a really fine detail cutting tool in our last pass that we'll create uh, later on. I am gonna change the tool number. So let's create this to be tool two. We're gonna keep the same cutting direction, horizontal. We're gonna keep tail stock disabled and we're gonna keep ramping enabled just like we did previously before generating this toolpath. And you'll see that this toolpath's a little bit simpler because we've already machined so much material and you'll notice that this follows the contours of our ring a little bit better. And again, gets nice and close to our center cylinder, that center bore, which is of course our center hole that's gonna be in our part. So let's go ahead and close this. 
I'm going to hide that. And let's select our two models one last time to create one more toolpath. So another rotational relief. I'm going to enable this one finishing pass. So this can be our final pass. Same cutting depths, same safe positions, but a different tool. So I'm going to now select a very small ball nose bit, specifically a one by three ball nose bit. Again, brass feeds and speeds already selected. And we want to have step downs disabled. So this is going to come straight to our part. I'm going to keep all the default feeds and speeds, but change my tool number to be tool three, which will prompt the tool change really nicely with our Carvera Air. Same direction, tailstock still disabled, ramping enabled. So let's click calculate. And this toolpath you'll see gets nice and tight around our model. So this smaller tool comes nice and close to all the contours, the details, all the nitty gritty aspects of our model to machine it nice and smooth to give us this really nice relief finish. So I can enable all three and you'll see that we have our layers of toolpaths here to actually create this part. And that's really all there is to it, to generating the cam for this one. Now you can choose to export all these paths together. So I can right click and save all paths, or I could export them as individual files. If you want your machine to uh, stop between machining and not just prompt you for a tool change, but give you a chance to kind of clean off the part, vacuum away any shavings, which isn't a bad idea, but perhaps not necessary for a small project like this, as it shouldn't create that much dust or that much shavings, especially if you're using the Air Assist, which we'll talk about next. So with your models prepared in Makera Camp, it's now time to prepare your CNC for manufacturing, and the first thing you need is your stock. You'll notice that we pre-board our stock to have a center diameter that's cut to size for our ring, as it's far easier to do this with a round or square piece of stock rather than a cut ring. Though, of course, you can always do fine detail filing and sizing your ring after manufacturing. We then need to set up the fourth axis module on our Carvera Air, which we look at in another tutorial video in greater detail. But this is pretty easy to do as you just need to bolt the module onto the bed of your CNC and plug it in to automatically configure it for fourth axis machining. Now you also want to remove the dust shoe from your CNC as we typically don't use this for fourth axis machining, but instead use the air assist for chip evacuation and cooling when machining metals. We can then secure our stock to the chuck jaws of our fourth axis while the machine is powered off. Start by placing the stock in the chuck and tighten the jaws by hand while keeping the stock centered in the four jaws. Once it's hand tightened, use the fourth axis wrenches to tighten the stock fully before powering on your CNC. We can then connect to our CNC using the Makera controller app to upload the G-code files that we exported from Makera Camp earlier on. After selecting the file, you can launch the config and run window to adjust the model position and settings. For your offset position, position your model to the very end of your stock away from the chuck jaws to create the cleanest cut. Your X offset might vary depending on the length of your stock and width of your ring, but the Y offset should re always remain zero. We want to enable auto Z probe and scan margin as well before clicking run to start this job. The Carvera Air will first prompt us to load the wired probe before tracing the perimeter of our design using the built-in laser pointer. Visually check to ensure that your design is entirely on the stock, and if not, stop and adjust your X offset set earlier on. The Carvera Air will then probe the surface point on the fourth axis to automatically set the Z height offsets to the fourth axis module. You'll then be prompted to load your first tool, which is the 3.175 by 25 millimeter end mill we set in our cam. Once loaded, press the button on the top of your CNC to start machining your first toolpath. After automatically measuring the tool offset, the Carvera Air will begin the roughing toolpaths. This will be the longest toolpath and take a few hours to machine fully as the stock is rotated during the roughing relief passes depending on how much stock needs to be removed to get to your ring. Remember to monitor your CNC and never leave it unattended during the manufacturing process. Once completed, you'll be prompted to load your second tool, which is the larger 2mm ball nose end mill. The Carvera Air will then complete the second roughing pass, which is when the design really starts to take shape. Lastly, you'll be prompted to load the third and final tool, the one millimeter bald nose end mill. And while this isn't required for this project, it's a good time to really quickly pause and point out why it's so great that you can easily remove and swap your spindle collets from your desktop CNC. I actually don't have a one millimeter ball nose bit with a 3.175 shank diameter on hand, but I do have one for four millimeter shank diameters. So in addition to doing a tool change, I can within a few seconds swap my collet size to use a different shank diameter bit for this last toolpath. Alternatively, I could actually put this larger collet in first and then use shank diameter bit adapters for your CNC bit. So that way you can actually use the same collet 
for different size shank diameter bits as shown in some of our other tutorial videos. So with the final tool loaded, the Carvera Air will complete the final finishing pass as it works around the model to smooth all of the details with the small ball nose bit. Once finished, carefully cut the tabs on your model using a coping saw or something similar to cut off the part from the remaining stock. After cutting the part, use a file or sandpaper to carefully clean up the edges and consider polishing the design for the smoothest and shiniest finish. And that's all there is to it. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more projects and tutorials on the official Makeara channel.